Hello my loving students, welcome to your civics class. In previous class, I told you about the constitution of India, its uh, enactment, enforcement and uh, adoption date, as well as I told you about the uh, why uh, constituent assembly was known as mini India, right? So, uh, in, uh, from that previous uh, class, we uh, came to know that constitution is what? It's a uh, law-making body according to which a state is governed, right? So, uh, we also came to know about the importance of uh, constitution, right? So, now in today's class, uh, I'm going to continue this chapter and in today's class, I'm going to tell you about the preamble which is very important part in uh, the constitution and next topic I'm going to tell you that is the features of salient features of Indian constitution so these topics I'm going to tell you so let's start today's class what is a preamble? So preamble is what? It is introduction to the constitution, right? So in book it's written there, preamble is an introduction to the constitution. It works before uh, the constitution and tells you the source, the objects and the contents of the constitutions. So uh, as like in a book, uh, we have content. When Whenever you open uh, your... Um, any book you'll find their preface and you'll find the uh, contents right so contents you'll find there so same like that uh, in the um, constitution also um, there is a pre uh, preamble so that preamble is what it's a introductory it's the introductory uh, part or the introductory uh, we can say statement uh, to the documents and that documents uh, document tells about the objectives and the purposes um, of the nation right so not only that it also explains so preamble also explains the um, source and a background uh, of the constitution and the intentions behind the creation of that uh, constitution as well as uh, the intention and the motives of the nation right so that's the preamble. Now, um, so a preamble has become an integral part to the constitution, right? It's an integral part of uh, in the constitution. Now, uh, let's talk about the historical uh, background. So um, it's written here. Our preamble has an interesting historical background on December 9th, 1946. So this date is to be noted. On December 9, 1946, Jawaharlal Nehru moved a resolution in the Constituent Assembly known as the Objectives Resolution. So the opening sentence of the resolution reads, This Constituent Assembly declares its form and solemn resolve to proclaim India as an independent sovereign republic and to draw up for her future governance a constitution. The famous objectives resolution was examined by the drafting committee. It made certain verbal changes in it. So the preamble as amend amended in 1976 reads as follows. So in this uh, introductory statement what is written? So. Uh, in the first uh, that uh, the preamble as amended in 19 uh, ch um, some changes is done in 1976 so it reads as we the people of India having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign socialist secular democratic and republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social, economic, and political, liberty of thought, expressions, belief, faith, and worship, equality of status and of opportunity 
equal opportunity and to promote among them all. Fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and the integrity of the nation. In our Constituent Assembly, this 26th day of November, that is 26th November, 1949, do hereby adopt, enact and give to ourselves this constitution. So this is written in that introductory part, introductory statement. So we, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India a sovereign, secular, socialist, democratic and republic country. So justice, social, economic and political, as well as liberty of thought, expressions um, and uh, belief, uh, faith and worship, equality of status and opportunity, equal opportunity and to promote among them all. So these are written in the preamble. So the uh, opening statement, that's the we, the people of India. That means of the people, for the people, by the people. This constitution has been framed, right? Okay. So, uh, socialist. So, what is socialist? The word socialist, socialist, that means um, that India is a socialist country. So, that means, uh, means uh, the um, socially India uh, has given equal status to everyone. So, uh, socially, that means uh, without discrimination on the ground of caste, creed, sex or uh, um, color, right? So uh, that's a socialist country. So India is a socialist country, a socialist state. Equal opportunity uh, India has given to all, equal status, equal opportunity and tries to improve the condition of the poor section uh, people also to uplift their um, condition, right? So, India is purely a socialist um, country, socialist country. Now, uh, let's talk about the secular. Secular, we know uh, India is not a, like, um, <clears throat> uh, India has a tolerance of other religion, right? So, we have um, uh, Hindu dominated, uh, India is Hindu dominated uh, country. So, not only Hindus, in India, there are Christians, um, there are um, other religion people are also um, here like uh, Parsis, uh, the Hindus, the Parsis, um, the uh, Christians and uh, the Muslims, um, they all are the citizen of India. That means uh, India is purely a secular state. Why? Because India has a tolerance of all the religions. Right? Okay, now. Next word is democratic. So, what is democratic? Or democracy? India is a democratic country. India is, India is the largest democracy in the world. Do you know why? Because India is having the second largest um, population in the world. Right? India ranks second in terms of population. So we know that in democracy, in democratic country, what happens is that the uh, leader, uh, the representative or the leader is chosen by we people uh, on the basis of UAF, Universal Adult Franchise. Right? That is why India is the largest democracy in the world. So India is what? It's a democratic country or democracy. India is the largest democracy, right? Now, uh, the next word is sovereign. So, sovereign is what? Sovereign means uh, independent authority given to a state or to a country. So, India is a sovereign state. India is a sovereign country, sovereign state, right? Um, and uh, India has uh, that power, uh, that power to uh, make decision of its own, right? 
so internally and externally um, india has that much power to make her own decision right so india is an independent state independent authority so that's the sovereign clear children okay now let's move to the next topic that's the um, salient features of the indian constitution okay before moving to the uh, that topic uh, salient features of the indian constitution let me explain about the republic india is a republic country why because india uh, is that country which is headed by the um, headed by the president and that president is what the president is elected by the people right so um, in another way uh, we can say that republic is uh, that form of government which is um, formed by or which is headed by the elected uh, members and uh, that elected members and the uh, and their representative right so that's your republic now let's move to the features of the indian constitution we know that the um, indian constitution is a written one written document it is the lengthiest constitution um, in the world as well as um, just now i told you about the republican and the democratic features uh, of the indian constitutions i explained about the uaf also universal adult franchise and a federal government and the single citizenship um, it's also the one of the features of the indian constitution parliamentary form of and the cabinet form of government this i'll um, explain you and the fundamental rights and duties as well as a directive principle of the state policy secularism welfare state these all features i'm going to explain you in this topic that is the features salient features of indian constitution so let's move to that topic so let's talk about the first feature of the indian constitution that is ours is written document so written document that means uh, in writing so we have a written document written constitution and uh, <clears throat> the rules and regulation regulations are codified uh, by the constituent assembly right so indian Uh, constitution is the best example for the written uh, constitution and uh, uh, whereas uh, unwritten constitution that is uh, where the um, these type of uh, this type of um, constitution is not codified by the constituent assembly right so that type of unwritten constitution is uh based on the large number of legislative uh, acts judicial decisions customs etc right and the best example for the unwritten constitution that is the british constitution is unwritten constitution has unwritten constitution whereas indian constitution is a written document written constitution clear okay now let's move to the next that is the lengthiest constitution in the world so indian constitution is the lengthiest one so why lengthiest because uh, this constitution ever framed by a free country the uh, indian constitution is or uh, this uh, constitution is the lengthiest constitutions ever framed uh, framed by a free country right so uh, why it is the lengthiest one because it contains 395 articles and 12 schedules right so no other constitution of the world has so extraordinary as in size and the constitution of united states of america has only seven articles right okay okay children i'll take your leave now um, hopefully in next video i'll be completing this uh, chapter and i'll be explaining the uh, all the features of indian constitution right okay that's all for the day thank you